Namaste. I'm Dr. Chandra Kumar Laksamba. Today I'm going to talk about the managing diversity in the classroom pedagogy. This is a very complex process. There are various learners related factors need to be identified and address in order to manage diversity in the classroom teaching and learning process. Therefore, my lecture today uh, is mainly aimed to explore these factors and highlight the solution that can be applied to manage diversity in the classroom pedagogy. Primarily, the following learners related factors need to be identified and addressed in order to manage diversity in the classroom pedagogy. And number one, you can see here different learning levels. And number two is learning difficulties. Number three is physical disabilities. And number four is socioeconomic factors. Number five is sociocultural issues and the gender orientations. Let's talk about the uh, first one, different learning levels. Information taking in and generating knowledge and skills, capacities vary from one learner to another. Therefore, as a teacher and learning facilitator, it is important to find out how learners learn the best. So, even though in a classroom, there are all able learners uh, participating learning and teaching process, but there are information taking in uh, levels are different from one learner to another. So that is very important to identify it by the learning uh, supporters, facilitators, and teachers. So some of the learners are very good in taking information, uh, in uh, attending lectures, talks, or, or any class, uh, teaching and learning process. And some of the learners are good in audio video, are uh, using uh, different kinds of uh, information technology uh, in the uh, learning and teaching process. Some of them are uh, very good uh, in uh, learning by reading themselves. Or they're the best, there are, there are, there are various ways to uh, uh, information taking in process and it varies from one learner to another. So that needs to be identified. And if it is necessary, and if it is uh, necessary, then teachers and facilitators do need to provide extra support to learners, like support staffs, if there are any available, can be provided to weaker learners. And the way they need uh, help, in a teaching and learning process. Some of them are not able to take information direct from lecture. So learning support stops, they will interpret in a simple way and the level the learners able to understand. This is also varies from context to context, place to place, country, one country to another and stages of the uh, level of the development. In a developed country like the USA and the United Kingdom, Australia and other European countries, they have a standard system. If anyone, any learners, if they are not able to learn, able to take or able to catch up their other friends in a the classroom, they will be provided special learning support teachers and the learning support teacher's role will be uh, to help the weaker learners and bring them up to the level of other learners. If not, at least uh, they have to make able to understand the gist of the lesson or uh, or any talk lectures. So, so this is. Uh, so this is the one first thing, different learning levels. You can find 
in any countries, whether it is developed or whether it is developing or whether it is urban or whether it is a rural area, you can find these different level of learners in a classroom. Uh, this is one of the factors which creates diversity um, in the classroom pedagogy and it is very important to address the issue and manage and create conducive learning in environment by the learner, uh, by the teachers and facilitators. The next one is learning difficulties. This is slightly different uh, than the first one. And this is not easier uh, than the first, first one to manage this diversity. This is uh, more or less related with the um, cognitive disorder mental disability that creates this kind of learning difficulties which is also as a teacher facilitator need to be identified and manage the diversity in order to create conducive learning environment learning difficulties as i said earlier learners not able to take the knowledge and skills to the normal level due to the uh, due to mental dis disability Cognitive disorder, commonly known uh, learning difficulties are listed below. Number one is dyslexia, which is difficulties in reading can also affect spelling and writing. And number two is dysgraphia, struggle in writing and written work may be eligible. So uh, number third is dyscalculia. The learners, they will find difficulties in any numerical works like adding, subtracting, dividing, and multiplying. So dyspraxia and apraxia muscle disorder limits writing speech, writing and speech. If that muscle limits or muscle disorders um, uh, around the upper limbs, hands, the learners not able to write uh, up to the uh, level of other learners. If it is affected around the vocal cords and learners not able to uh, speak and interpret in a normal level uh, and, and that is there will be a, a problem. So last one is attention deficiency disorder uh, where the learners not able to give attention to learning uh, process. So these are the thing slightly different than the first one. This is uh, biological or medical and um, human, human physiology uh, related uh, disabilities and especially in the fossil countries, developed countries, these kind of diff uh, uh, learning difficulties normally identified at the very early learning stages uh, at the very learning, very early learning stage, uh, like level one, class uh, one or KG nursery, and they will be taken away to the special needed schools. And they are, their learning and teaching will take place accordingly there, and special by the special trained teachers, facilitators, and their reading materials also uh, designed accordingly. And I'm just trying to talk about the, uh, uh, these kind of uh, learning difficulties in the context of third world countries, developed countries, Afro-Caribbean countries, like Asian, the majority of Asian countries, where there is no any system, and there is no any policy, and there is no any uh, specialized teacher and facilitators to identify the, these kinds of difficulties at the early age. So, all these kind of learners suffering from dyslexia, dyscalculia, and uh, attention deficiency, dyspraxia, um, dysgraphia are in a normal day-to-day -day class because there is no any system. Maybe there are one or two places, but in the majority, there is no any uh, such a kind of facility exist because of that, all learning difficulties learners, they come, they end up in a normal teaching and learning classrooms. So because of that, teachers and facilitators from third world countries, they must be very careful 
to identify this learner and as much as possible to give uh, learning and information according to their need and according the level of uh, they will understand and it is not easy it is very difficult so the teacher and facilitators uh, facilitators from uh, third world countries they need to be trained uh, specially to identify all these things but i'm not sure that whether this kind of training also exists in a country or not so managing diversity in the classroom pedagogy in the context of third world countries or developed countries it is not that easy so very difficult and uh, this is the dilemma of third world countries and need to be done something uh, in the management diversity in the classroom this is not only possible by the school institute learning and teaching and learning institution uh, and teachers and facilitators government and policy makers need to give uh, special attention to this area um, especially this dys uh, dyslexia in the context of Nepal. I think still, uh, I haven't heard that much about this uh, problem in the Nepal, but I'm sure that there are many learners are suffering from uh, these uh, uh, difficulties. When they read and write, when they write, they will write uh, upside down letters, alphabets, because whenever they read, they will see the words and sometimes they even not able to decipher the words because they will see um, the alphabets within the word uh, is upside down. So for them, it doesn't make any sense. So some of the dyslexia learners, they will be able to read as a normal uh, if uh, uh, they will be provided that kind of facilities. Some of the learner will be able to read in a green paper. Some of the learners, dys, uh, dyslexia learner, able to read and write purple way in a normal way in a, a yellow color background of uh, paper. So you have to identify it, where they will find, what kind of dys, um, uh, dyslexia uh, and dyslexic learners. And if you will provide that kind of facilities, very simple facilities like uh, color papers uh, and um, uh, plastic uh, different uh, colors of plastic so they can put that colors on the uh, book page uh, paragraphs or lessons and they can read it so this is um, one of the easiest way to manage diversity in the classroom um, and other dysgraphia are slightly uh, not manageable easily in the classroom dyscalculia sometimes you'll be able to manage using uh, uh, color papers uh, as I mentioned earlier and dyspraxia this is also very difficult to manage in the classroom and attention deficiency also very deficit also very uh, difficult one in the normally uh, in a advanced country they will have special needed schools and institutions where they will be their learning and uh, teaching process take place so number th three one is physical disability Physical disabilities, this is a limitation on physical functioning such as mobility, dexterity, blindness and other physical handicaps. So you can see uh, and quite easy to identify them. But still, in the fossil country, developed country, they have a special institutions, uh, schools or access, uh, um, even normal schools, they have a disability access uh, for them so they can uh, use their wheelchair to go into the classroom but our schools uh, in Nepal uh, I think there are only few schools in a uh, Kathmandu city uh, or, or major cities in the uh, Nepal I think you can find otherwise the majority of schools are not accessible for um, handicapped physically disabled learners if learner is um, wheelchair bound there is no any uh, wheelchair bound friendly um, schools, classrooms, uh, and blindness. There are a few schools in the Kathmandu uh, and other parts of the country as well, but not sufficient enough uh, of, for the uh, all blind learners in the country. So, one thing, uh, le um, 
teacher and uh, facilitators can provide, can manage this diversity, creating space in the classroom. So they can move freely without any obstruction. Uh, if a handicapped uh, learner uh, with the wheelchair bound one, if in the classroom, if there is a, enough space to move around, and that is a kind of a degree of managing diversity in the classroom for that kind of uh, learners. So this is very important, uh, and, and, and not uh, this is possible by only school uh, management, uh, not only uh, by the teachers, learners, uh, and facilitators, but this is uh, the country's government policymakers' responsibility. So this is what we're facing a lot. Um, disabled uh, learners in the Nepal are not uh, getting any facilities. Learner, uh, learning institutes are, uh, institutes are not uh, accessible and friendly for the physically disabled learners. Now, fourth one is socioeconomic background. This is um, also uh, throughout the whole world, across the world, this kind of this um, diversity exists, even in the USA, even in the United Kingdom, uh, even in the France, Germany, and other advanced countries. Also, you can find the socioeconomic background, and, uh, and this background created diversity in the classroom. In general, socioeconomic backgrounds uh, relates to ca class status, such as poor, uh, middle or upper class in community and society. Class status is directly or indirectly linked with the power. And learners can reflect their family socioeconomic background uh, in the classroom, in the teaching and learning um, places. And this kind of situation among uh, learners create socioeconomic diversity in the classroom environment, which facilitators and instructors, teachers need to be um, able to or must able to address using various uh, strategy and methods. As we know that our society communities are not equal. As I mentioned, there are class system. And because of that class system, rich and poor in the uh, society, and that uh, links directly to the classroom environment. There are also uh, rich families, children also there, and from poor backgrounds also there. But these kind of rich and poor will create diversity, even wearing clothes in a classroom, and using a different teaching, uh, learning materials, books and pens used by the learners, uh, those who can afford uh, expensive pens and pencils, they will afford. And that makes kind of a diversity in the classroom. So if it is possible, uh, classroom, uh, to minimize this kind of uh, diversity in the classroom, if it is possible, school management, uh, they, can, they, can, they can bring the policy of uniform, wearing uniform in the classroom. That will minimize the differences in the class. Uh, rich and poor class children that will minimize uh, and uh, help in managing diversity up to a one degree. So they will be in one uniform, same uniform. So you can't distinguish them who is rich. You can't uh, uh, <coughs> say that who is rich and poor in the same uniform. And at the same time, if possible, if uh, uh, schools and learning institutes, if they will be able to provide reading uh, and writing materials by Charging money to learners, their parents, I think they can provide same kinds of pens and same kinds of books and pencils uh, um, and, and writing materials. So that can uh, reduce the chances of uh, creating that, this kind of uh, diversity in the classroom pedagogy. So these are the things we can manage background. But this is ongoing. This is even. Uh, in a future time, these class differences, because uh, uh, people to people and family to families, um, uh, different capacity to earning resources, uh, owning resources. So because of that, this is not possible to uh, equalize. This is possible, not practically, not that easy to equalize in the society. 
uh, it leads, you can um, manage it for a few years, but it will lead to, uh, again, rich and poor class, and that directly linked to the learning uh, and teaching uh, institutions, and that creates this diversity. So we, um, the school management, learning, manage, uh, learning institutions management, and those who uh, involve in teaching and learning, uh, need to uh, manage this diversity is a very simple way, which is, uh, I have already mentioned that, uniform, providing uh, same uh, reading and uh, writing materials by this school, by charging money to uh, the parents, and that can be done uh, by simplistic way. The number fifth one is sociocultural background. Sociocultural background of students creates its own kind of diversity in the classroom. This kind of diversity is quite sensitive and needs to be addressed appropriately. Developing socio-ethnic uh, and cultural sensitivity and awareness and creating the diversity as a knowledge base. But this is, whenever we talk about the diversity in the classroom, management of the diversity in the classroom, uh, in the thorough context, uh, context, we come across with the varieties of uh, diversities which I have already mentioned uh, in my lecture earlier, in my talk in earlier. But in the context of developed country, where uh, other kind of diversities are controlled and managed at the early stage and diverted or, or, or channelized or taken to the special needed school and institutions, in that context, that kind of places like the USA, UK, and Australia, they think diversity management is only the management of ethnicity, culture, religion, beliefs, and faiths. Uh, uh, and, and that is only they think about the diversity in the classroom. But uh, in the third world country, in our context, uh, this is only one factor, uh, uh, including other factors. So this is a very sensitive uh, for uh, whatever, develop or developing countries, if you are not dealing if you are not taking into positive way, this, this, uh, this diversity, socio-cultural related background of diversity create very sensitive, uh, conflicting situation in the classroom. But if you take this one in a positive way, this is also assets and resources for the uh, teaching and learning process. For example, uh, in the context of Nepal, we do celebrate the sign and Tiar uh, and other um, uh, Jatis will celebrate their own uh, festivals like Losar, Udauli, Ubauli, and um, other many more uh, like Fagu, uh, Fagu Holi. These are the things we will uh, mainly celebrate uh, in Nepal. So if we will use the sign during the time of the design or nearer to the design, those who celebrate the sign in Tihar, that background of children or learners or, or, or other teachers, if they will uh, arrange talk, talk program and lectures uh, about the design, why people celebrate the sign, how many days they will celebrate the sign, and, uh, and about Tihar and Deusi and Vailo, and if they will keep class informing this. Learners from other backgrounds, they will learn about uh, the sign, Tihar, and culture of Nepali people, those who are residing in the Nepal, uh, and celebrate uh, these festivals. And also, uh, in, um, in the time of uh, Losar, if the learner and teachers participate about this, uh, arrange and participate, talk and seminars or discussions uh, or any positive way of uh, information giving to others, other learners about Losar, that will be a, uh, one of the sources of teaching and learning. So they learn, other learners learn about what is Losar is. How many types of losar they will celebrate in Nepal? Yes, there is a one, uh, only one losar. They call losar, losar, losar in Nepal. But uh, Tamang celebrates in different dates, and uh, Gurung celebrate losar in a different date, uh, and Serpa they do celebrate in a different date. So why there are there are three different dates celebrating losar? 
why these uh, three communities celebrating Losar in a different dates? That kind of uh, information, if uh, given to the learners, that will create knowledge and also manage diversity in the classroom as well. Other community learners from other communities, they will learn about what is Losar is. And also those uh, who are celebrating Losas, also they will learn about it if uh, they have only little knowledge. And also uh, teacher and facilitators also learn about it. So if we use like a holy uh, as a uh, information designating in the classroom, giving information about why, why uh, in Nepal, Fago will celebrate it in two different days. Like, in a Pahari region, one day before, and in the Tarai region, one day after. So why in these two days? Why we are not going to make in one day? Why we are not celebrating um, uh, Holi, Fagu in one day throughout the country? But there are differences. But if, you, if we take this importance of celebrating in two days, two different dates uh, uh, in Pahari and Tarai, and why it is if we will clear, we will give this information. We will interpret in this information in positive way to learners, even the society and community in the whole across the country. So people know about it because we are the people living in this country and celebrating different cultural religions, um, religions festivals and believes and all we are here and we are Nepali, if we will share this, our beliefs, culture, tradition and religion and festival in a positive way, in a teaching and learning environment, that creates managing diversity in the classroom and generate knowledge and skills. For the unity, uh, unity in the diversity. So number six, one is, as I mentioned earlier, gender orientation. And gender orientation is, this is a more sensitive uh, topics and issue as well. Before we used to talk about only male and female sex, but nowadays no more. Even in the forms, uh, uh, official forms, government forms, if there is a, um, it used to be male and female sex, but now that need to be replaced by the gender because of the gender orientations. In this society and community, we are not only male and female. There are many more genders like lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, and other uh, orientation, uh, orientation based uh, gender orientation base as well, more than this one. And even though gender orientation has been constitutionally and legally recognized in Nepal, in the context of Nepal, is a very good news. Uh, this gender orientation has been recognized um, constitutionally. It is not yet an issue in our classroom as well. It could be by various reasons. I'm going to cover this one. However, teacher and student needs to be aware of these issues, how to handle it how to handle it and, and consider LGBT as a normal, even though, even though they are a minority, but we are not going to take this into uh, issues of discussion. I'm, I mean, issues of negative discussions, deviant, but we are going to bring them together, recognizing their existence in the society, uh, in the community, in the classroom, or in workplace, that is a very important. This is a basic human rights that anyone who feels uh, and anyone who thinks considered to be what he or she is need to be given right to live and go ahead and survive in a community society and other parts like a working uh, environment and learn teaching and learning environment, they must have an equal opportunity. They must have to be recognized. They must have to be given um, 
equal opportunity and respect and dignity because that is the given that is beyond our control the gender orientations the way they are exist here that is our beyond our our control that is a biological genetic um uh thing which is because of biological and genetic orientations they are their behave their thinking their feelings are different to um uh, that that um indicates their uh, different gender orientation and as a whole as a community uh, to create uh, uh, integration i mean to create cohesion in the society cohesion and conducive environment in the learning teaching and learning environment and they need to be given equal status the way the constitution of nepal has recognized and given equal status in the country so uh we can use this is one of the factors which may create diverse which may uh, create kind of issues in the classroom but as a teacher and facilitators managing diversity in the classroom we must have to consider these issues very seriously and managing diversity in the classroom and creating conducive teaching and learning environment but in the classroom why it is not uh, that uh, not yet uh, an issue in the classroom in the context of nepal it could be because in the um, class 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 up to 8 i think the gender orientations recognition of the gender orientation by the person him or herself is i think early stages when they will turn into the poverty and they are going into the the maturity stages they will slowly feel and recognize whenever their body organs start to grow so they will feel it and then you can uh, you may or we may be able to see uh, in class 9 10 11 12 uh, and colleges and university levels so that uh, in that situation in that context they must have a equal status gender status and though those who are managing diversity in the classroom as a lecturer professor or a teacher facilitators need to be managed diversity accordingly with the full dignity and equality so managing diversity in the classroom pedagogy uh is it's conceptualizing the learning and teaching in the diverse context such as as i mentioned already so this is i'm going to list this um diversity created uh that creates in the classrooms uh which are different levels learning levels which uh, i have talked uh in depth about the um different learning levels how that creates uh, so what is the different learning levels and learning difficulties and physical disabilities and differences between learning difficulties and physical uh, disabilities and socio economic factors socio cultural issues and gender orientations so conceptualizing this um uh, diversity in the classroom that can create that kind of diversity you can we can find in the classroom so i'm going to include uh here in my talk program few um theoretical framework such as social constructiv uh, constructivist pedagogy and managing diversity in the classroom teaching and learning process social constructivist in this theoretical framework in this framework learners construct knowledge and skills from their own experience and then the teachers and facilitators we normally leave them or facilitate them without any obstructing their knowledge and skills from their own experience and then allow the learners to construct further on so that can also be helpful 
managing diversity in the classroom. But not this theoretical framework will not manage the whole diversity. I mean, the diversity um, factors which I have listed earlier, those all kinds of diversity will not uh, manage by this theoretical framework, this theory, uh, theory but it helps us to manage diversity in the classroom pedagogy. Some kinds of diversity can be managed by using this theoretical framework. So in that case, in this case, teachers, facilitators only facilitate the teaching and learning process. Uh, in this theoretical frame, framework, mainly this kind of this thinking and this uh, concept was, was generated by uh, mainly two um, theoricists, educationist or psycho, um, psychoanalysis. Uh, first one is called um, Jean Piaget and the other one is uh, Vygotsky. And these two uh, educationists, psychoanalysts created this concept, social constructivist concept. By using this concept, we'll be able to manage at least some of the um, factors which we have covered earlier, that factors uh, help us to manage that uh, diversity uh, in the classroom pedagogy. So the other one is culturally responsive pedagogy, which is I've also covered uh, in a brief, in an um, earlier talk, in my talk, cultural progressive um, responsive pedagogy is mainly focuses on creating conducive environment for learners, uh, for all ethnicities, races, like Pahari races, Tarai races, race, and uh, Himali race, or uh, other races, and Jat Jatis, language, beliefs, faith, which is faiths, religions, and cultures, teachers facilitated to motivate learners by integrating diverse ethnicity, language, religion, and cultures uh, with the existing curriculum and creating inclusive and relevant teaching and learning methods and activities. So this is culturally responsive pedagogy. So we can use, as I mentioned earlier, uh, different kinds of our ethnic backgrounds, uh, ethnic orientations, and our practices our cultures we can bring into the classroom uh, for uh, to generate knowledge and skills, not for the conflicts. We'll take this one into positive way, then we'll uh, share with the other community members, other learners, then when we encourage the learners from that background to give a presentation to give a talk about his religion and culture. So other learners will uh, be able to learn about the other learners, their classmates, culture and traditions. Why that is different? Why they are following this? Why that is important for their day-to-day -day work, their life, their community? And they will learn it. So we can use this culturally responsive pedagogy to, to, to create or to manage diversity in the classroom. But we'll take it positively. as as I mentioned, why we are celebrating Fago in two different days. Uh, uh, one day early uh, in the um, Hill region of Nepal and next day, Tarai region. Why that is? And also we'll give them uh, the lessons, I mean, teaching or information that even though we have a different races, yes, there are Aryan races in Nepal, there are Mongolian races in Nepal, and there are Dravidian races are in Nepal, also people from Tarai, and people from Hill, people from uh, Himalayan regions. Yes, we look different, but if we'll take these differences into a um, positive way, then we can create uh, learning resources so we can create uh, these differences as assets for the nations not only for the classroom not only for the teaching and learning environment so this is very important this cultural responsive pedagogy will play the especially socio-cultural background and socio-economic background and those who are from different uh, geographical uh, region of the country 
So, so that will bring into one place and take as assets and will use as resources and will use for the uh, positive way of teaching and learning um, and generating knowledge and skills. And that helps also to create managing diversity in the classroom pedagogy. So other one, third one is critical uh, pedagogy also um, I have included here. This critical pedagogy empowers learners. So we need also empowerment to learners, to those weaker section of the learners to manage diversity in the classroom. But again, in a positive way, again, uh, in a uh, taking as a resource. For example, um, if uh, teachers are or facilitators are orientated uh, in a traditional way, suppressing learners. So in that situations, we can, uh, um, and if our learners are in the position of oppression or oppressed, then this critical pedagogy help the learners to come out from the oppression and to make equalize uh, to their a teacher and facilitator equal to their teacher and facilitator even though their teacher and facilitator uh, have a knowledge more than their uh, learners but still uh, the the borders demarcation line between uh, teacher and learners will be deconstructed by dialogical process by relieving oppressed and oppressor both giving them a special uh, education a special knowledge why it is not why it is important to uh, deconstruct demarcation line from teacher and learner why if there is a demarcation line then learner whether could uh, learn more or if we deconstruct demarcation line uh, or barrier uh, from teacher and learner and then then that situation may uh, create more conducive uh, teaching and learning environment. So that uh, kind of environment generates more knowledge and skills. So we can give that kind of information to uh, teachers as well to relieve from their position, oppressive position, and to become a more friendly as a facilitator. So creating teaching and learning environment more friendly, so learners will feel more open, not suppressed, not oppressed, and they will learn more uh, knowledge and skills than the oppressive situation. So this um, critical pedagogy is mainly originated by the um, uh, German, uh, uh, I mean, Frankfurt School of Thoughts and their um, authors uh, and philosopher from uh, that uh, institution and that is also that uh, institutions mainly taken by uh, pedagogy um, I mean Paulo Freire as a resource and source of the um, generating all this um, theory concept by the Paulo Freire and successfully applied in the teaching and learning environment where we can also use this uh, Paulo Freire's uh, uh, pedagogy of oppressed and uh, relief uh, of oppressor and oppression, dialogical process, and problem posing um, teaching and learning environment, and deconstructing banking concept of learning. These all different kind of critical pedagogy also are helpful in managing diversity in the classroom. But we have to remember that this is not, this, uh, is not the solution. This will be helpful to manage some factors that creates diversity in the classroom, not all. But if we'll put together, if we'll triangulate these three theoretical framework together, uh, uh, or, or triangulate in one place, we will effectively able to manage diversity in the uh, classroom pedagogy. So there is no 100%, there is no 
we can do everything by one uh, theoretical framework, one methodology, but we have to use, we have to put together to create uh, this managing diversity. And also this diversity, as I uh, mentioned earlier, there is a difference from place to place, uh, from differs from country to country. There is a difference from um, level of development. Developed countries has a different problem, uh, and the developing country has a different problem. Country, so the countries those have different type of uh, situations. First thing identified need to be identified and apply into managing diversity in the classroom. So, in conclusion, there is no fit all approach. As I mentioned, the teacher has to modify various approaches to classroom management and integrate with one's own teaching learning situations. So as I mentioned, there is no in one way to solve this one. We have to integrate, take different methods. Sometimes we have to create. And at the same time, I think for the third world countries, teachers from third world countries, or facilitators from third world countries, need to be given special uh, training so they can identify these different kinds of factors that create diversity in the classroom. Thank you.